Hello, my name is Jeremy Shear. I'm a Partner Solution Architect here at AWS. I'm part of the Oracle Applications on AWS team, and my focus is helping partners and customers successfully move J.D. Edwards workloads to AWS. Today I'm joined by Mr. Dave Willis. Dave? Thank you, Jeremy. Dave Willis, Regional Sales Director at Connectria. Well, Dave, thank you for joining me today. So, to Dave, I have an interesting challenge today. I have a customer who has made the decision to lift and shift to AWS. But this customer has an IBM I where they're running JD Edwards today. So th their current solution is they have a lot of x86 systems, you know, their JDE deployment server, their web servers, they even have SharePoint and Exchange servers in the mix. But their back-end JD Edwards database is running on an IBM I out here. So I know how I can go about moving these x86 workloads to, to AWS. I can use my MGN service, my AWS migration service, to move them over and, and re replicate them right into AWS. But what do I do with this IBM iBox, Dave? That's a great question. And Jeremy, at the point out, you made a good observation, that is, it's very common, if not the standard, that most Enterprise One environments has not only the x86 workloads that are part of the Enterprise One uh, uh, architecture, but they have other applications, a lot more x86 workloads that make up their entire IT infrastructure. So moving them across uh, together is very important. Plus, we also understand this x86 workload, there is a relationship between this uh, IBM systems or their database that's running for the Enterprise One and a deployment server and JAS server. So they have to be in close proximity. Right. So to answer your question about migration, what we would do um, with the IBM or with the IBM on AWS hybrid cloud solution is we would actually set up a replication between uh, their, their on-prem to one of our locations here on AW, at the AWS hybrid cloud environment. And we use replication technology to move over not everything that's on their LPAR, so not just the, the uh, JD Edwards database, but all the objects, everything that's associated. So this uh, LPAR that's sitting on their primary production facility looks identical to the one sitting in the hybrid cloud solution. But also more importantly, as I mentioned before, is that there's this relationship between that x86 workload uh, at AWS is still maintained with the IBM I systems because of the low latency hybrid cloud nature of the solution. And that's typically about one to two milliseconds. So basically for that client, uh, their, their environment that's sitting at on-prem will look just like it does in the hybrid cloud environment. Wow, wow. That, that sounds like a, a, a pretty workable solution. But I got, I got another one for you, which is we need DR for this solution. So the way I would handle DR in, in the kind of the traditional AWS architecture is I would use my AWS DRS service, my Amazon Elastic Disaster Recovery, to replicate my x86, my EC2 instances out here to my second AWS region. How, how do I do that in the hybrid cloud solution? Well, it's an interesting question because actually the process that we did for the migrating uh, the client from their on-prem to the hybrid cloud is very similar to that when we create the disaster recovery facility, that, that IBM LPAR, which would be for uh, dedicated for doing uh, the um, a disaster recovery would also use replication, but in this case it'd be a little different because we're going to use SAN to SAN technology to be able to replicate IBM's global mirroring system to be able to replicate all of the images in the entire LPAR from the production primary facility over to the disaster recovery facility. But keeping in mind, working together as a hybrid cloud solution and disaster recovery services, we still maintain and understand that this that one to two millisecond latency between the x86 workload and the IBM workload is still maintained. Uh, and so when we do the replic when we do the rollover or the disaster recovery, that occurs all at the same time, bringing over the enterprise app enterprise one application as as an ERP system, not just moving workloads between uh, uh, x86 and IBM I. Okay, so it sounds like we have DR covered. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about backups. So on AWS, I can use my AWS backup 
to back up these x86 images out to my S3 buckets. And then those S3 buckets can then automatically be replicated, you know, to a second region. Mm -hmm. How do I do those backups in this hybrid environment? This is my crown jewels. This is J.D. Edwards. You know, my business depends on this. Right. Well, and, and, and Jeremy, I'm glad that you, you point out the, a differentiator between disaster recovery and backup. Backup is key, the protection of your data or data protection uh, and all the technologies and the ability to, to, to support and maintain your data, not lose any data is important. And backup is a key component of that. But disaster recovery, when we talk about disaster recovery, we're talking about a complete site loss, being able to bring over the system, identical as it was in production, over to DR. So when we talk about backup, we're really talking about very similar to what you just described, and that is that we've got the ability to backup locally on VTL, our virtual tape library, and then that backup also can be replicated over to a secondary site. So, so that, in addition to having the SAN to SAN replication of your LPAR, also your local backups in case you've got corrupted files on the system and at the IBM system at the primary facility, all that can be restored onto the system without really declaring a disaster. But so there's a lot of resiliency that you get in the hybrid cloud solution that you may or may not have on your, your um, uh, primary facility or your um, uh, on-prem solution. Uh, and you inherit that as part of, of going to the hybrid cloud solution. And sometimes companies would not have invested or they uh, look at being cost conscious, may not invest in that type of technology. It's one you automatically inherit when you come to the hybrid cloud solution. Wow, wow, so in this architecture, it looks like I have all the pieces covered. I can go from my, with my x86 on-prem, I can use MGN to replicate it into AWS for mig migration. I can then use DRS to replicate my x86 to a second region for DR. I can use my AWS backups to do all of my backups for my x86 workload. And then on the IBM tier, you know, the IBM is migrated into the Connectria hybrid cloud solution using some native IBM tools. It is then with SAN to SAN replication to the second Connectria location. Mm -hmm. And then we have backups covered with the VTL solution. I think we got everything covered in this day. That is correct. And if I'd add one more thing, going back to the beginning of our conversation, and that is, that's not just Enterprise One, that's all their x86 workloads, all their applications being recovered as one da a data center recovery solution. So so I can really, at, after I do this migration, you know, this is a full data center exit and I can close down my on-premise. That's correct. That's awesome. Well, thank you, Dave, for this conversation today. Thank you, Jerry. I think it's very enlightening. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.